What's up, chat? What's up, YouTube viewership? What's up to the SoundCloud viewership? All other audio platforms, man. I'm going to try to get them all on there as much as I can. It's definitely uh, been a process learning how to make this podcast pop even more. But we had a huge weekend. Shout out to the subs. I don't know who subbed. My man, K Texan with the sub. But I am home today. I hit up my nerve street guys, man. I said it's a big show this week, and they're actually in Denver. Let me get chill with the sub, man. But for anybody, I'm still low. How am I low? Check, 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 check. Turn the gain up. My gain is all the way up. I don't oh. like putting it right there. All right, listen, we're going to get to all, we're going to get all the stuff, you know what I'm saying? Joe Mixon broke a lot of tackles, but we're going to get to all of that. We really <laughs> are. I have Madden Champ Journey on the line. Journey, what's up? I appreciate you joining us, man. You are the Madden 19 champion, the best player in the world. How does it feel? Well, all I'm saying is, you know, nobody can say anything bad about you. You know what I'm saying? That's you can't it. take that away from you. All we can say is, you, you know, you're the best. That's all. That's what you got to say. That the whole year came down to one game, and that's pretty much all you got to say is that now they can tell you you're the best. That's it? Yeah. Okay. I like it. There you hear it from Disney himself, man. And also, <laughs> not only not only are you the man champion, you are the leader of the entire Disney cult the entire Disney movement that man has going on now how does it feel to hold that reign and really have to represent for the youth you know that's why I've been you know I've been growing people up you know what I'm saying Pavon you know he's kind he's coming a long way he's Disney the game now I got a lot of people you know uh who we got Spoto ain't a part of it you know Spoto's you know, not, he's not a part of Disney he's, uh, he's, he a part. Rate. he's rated R he can't be a part of Disney you know Journey doesn't do any type of that cursing or anything like that. You know, he, that's not what you represent. You represent the clean household, the whole new world, you know, really representing for the for the eight-year-olds. And that, that's really what's important at the end of the day. Yes, sir. Okay. But yeah. anyway, like I said, you kind of like an OG now. This is your second belt. You are 19 now. So you kind of not even really young anymore in the uh, terms of man players. Talk about how this feels different do you feel like you're a veteran now or do you still feel like the youth bro honestly i feel like shoot it's only my second season although I, i've been to so many like more tournaments than most people but i feel like i got way more experience than most of these guys and i feel like i got more years to go than most of these guys so i feel like i don't know I, i'm in the middle of both okay so you de definitely feel like all right so you, you're right in your prime pretty much prime yeah. is right now okay okay uh, has anything changed about the way you approach these games from, let's say, your first live event as compared? Because the first live event was probably when you lost to DJ Llamas. Was it the first one or was it the no, 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 no. challenge that we went to? So you're talking like the first live tournament, right? Not well, online. Yeah, the first wow. live one, because obviously the first live online one was the challenge or the classic last year. So honestly, I feel like my first on uh, first live event, I feel like I looked at the game better than I did my first two live events this year like in the classic and the clubs i feel like my mindset was better because you know in clubs and the classic i literally almost like pass the ball almost every play and that's just not how i play and you know and when i won my first title my first live event uh, i knew what my strengths were i ran the ball and i trusted my defense okay. so i went back to that in my last tournament right here so you definitely have matured as a man player would you say yeah okay. yeah for sure Okay, now, I did ask you, yesterday I asked you what was your toughest game. And the way I looked at it, the, the final three, they were, they were all easy. I mean, would you kind of agree with that? Like, what are the last three games of single elimination, what, what was tough about those? Uh, I'd say Lil Man and Spoto were, like, for sure, like, favorable for me. I felt like I outplayed both of them mm -hmm. by a large margin. But I feel like Kratoman played me the best out of those three. Uh, just because, like, the run, the run defense he played, like, I would never break a long run. I'd probably get like three or four yards max every time, like consistently, like three or four yards. But he would be okay with that. He would just never give me the, like the long play. Like he'd play defense like how you would play. Like he'd start ma using his safeties. He'd start using his slot cornerback just to make sure I didn't get a, you know, like easy one. So yeah. And so. that's the thing, man. And we talked about yesterday. I we run the same playbook. 
And I'm, I'm yeah. proud that you took my offense and won a belt with it. I was really proud of that, you know, that you really elevated New Orleans to the best playbook in the, in the world. But the one thing you do is you run the ball better than anybody. I don't know. I, and I swear, I don't believe D. Jones. I don't believe the Disney DDA. I don't believe it until I see you run the ball and just bust uh-huh. off 80-yard runs, 40-yard runs. Talk about the run game and why it was so effective for you at the Madden, uh, the Man Bowl. I've always told people this, bro. I, I always think that online and offline, like, they're to- totally different games. I don't know. Like, they feel different. Uh, run blocking, you know, I feel you guys have been t- saying this in Madden 17. Like, you said the run blocking was so much better in the live events than it was online. And I feel like it's the same way right now. And um, my dudes just, like, they were just holding their blocks. Randy Moss, John Ross, and Andre Roberts, they all have low run blocking. They are just holding the cornerbacks and safeties the whole entire play. And then I had Joe Mixon just breaking tackles left and right. So it was easy. So you know, the, the balls were there. Joe Mixon would be your MVP, you think? Oh, yeah, for sure. And uh, Joe Mixon with uh, just defense. Joe Mixon and the defense players. All right, well, let's th- that's the one thing that I- – obviously, we're going to go over a little bit of games, and I- I'll tell you what I thought were some of the biggest plays – but what I do want to go over is just this this team. You sent me the team, and it all starts with that with salary cap, man. You really have to have the right team that, that really fits your strength and the right team to really go out there and get done what you want to get done. And that was yeah. the biggest thing I took away was that I thought your team was really tough. I didn't think I – mean, I thought – I mean, I, I didn't see everybody's team, but I really thought this team on paper was, was really good. And the first thing we start out is that you do have Tier 3 Sprinter, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that means you have all 20 cap guards, and that does kind of help because when I got rid of Tier 3 Sprinter, I um I did have 15 cap guards, and we talked about your running game. Guards really held up. I mean, you got Brandon Brooks is the best running gu- <laughs> best guard in the game, Philadelphia Eagle, and uh, Hudson. So those guys held up. But uh, talk about zone run. Why do you use zone run? For spin move? So zone run, uh, yeah. So Shannon Sharp had 80 spin moves to start off, and Randy Moss had 81 spin moves, so... I had to get zone run to increase their spin moves, and it also it also helps out with run blocking. So uh, my whole team would get better run blocking, okay. and it would help out with that. And also, I, I I do feel like like even last year, I feel like if you get a like a run blocking cam, I think that even if it like increases by one, like the run blocking, I feel like it just makes it play so much better if you just like have a cam for running. Okay, and you don't have the best quarterback. You nah. Have Lamar Jackson, and you also told me you didn't use conductor, which is no, nah, I didn't. Did it so you don't. So the only red cam you had was the uh, John Ross with deep route running. Yes. Uh, yeah, so I felt like I felt like decision. I knew I had bugs and some serious in my group. Mm-hmm. I felt like I needed a deep route cam to like exploit it re- pretty much because you know I felt like play action did really good versus five two and like a lot of play action plays in New Orleans is really bad. So I really wanted to just do two hitches in a post, mm-hmm. and to do that I had to get a deep route cam just to put it out there and. You know, versus some serious, I just, like, I was dotting, but I just couldn't stop them. So I was, like, I was happy. Then Boogs really couldn't stop me either. So I was, like, I was happy with the decision. Okay. So, and you probably spent the least cap on wide receivers of anybody probably in the tournament. Is, is yeah. That way? Like, because even you don't have the best John Ross, right? This is just a, I don't know what John Ross this is. But yeah. He looks pretty. And then, obviously, Andre Roberts was good back in the club championship, but he's kind of, going by the wayside, but for 60 cap and 63 cap, even your Randy Moss, uh, I swear the best Randy Moss is 85 cap. Was this the best Randy yeah. Moss? I, I know, obviously it's not the ultimate legend, but was this yeah. the best uh, ghost Randy Moss you could have? Yeah, so basically, like, people were using, like, if you'd use 85 Moss, I, I'd say, like, I'd, I'd only do that as if I, if I had, like, tier 1 sprinter, tier 2 sprinter. I felt yeah. like since I had tier 3 sprinter, I was okay with 97 speed at 6'4". And then Andre Roberts would be 98 speed. The only reason I had these receivers is because I had tier three sprinter, mm-hmm. and they would just go up to speed. Like if they were like plus one speed, I would never use these receivers. So I was like, if I have tier three sprinter, I'll just uh, uh, what do you call it? Not spend that much cap on my receivers. Just okay. stay there. Okay, so talk about this Joe Mixon, man, because it was just a straight team MVP. Joe Mixon, 85 uh, cap. Yeah, uh, like, I don't know. Like, this Joe Mixon is crazy. He has, like, 97 speed, and I feel like the threshold for break tackle where, like, you just can't hit stick him ever is 90. So he had that, and his spin was crazy. But, like, mix all those two in, you just have, like, an unbelievable running back. And you can just, like, get – like, you do want some fluke plays in, in tournaments. Like, if you get one of those – one or two fluke plays, that can change the whole tournament. And he gave me a bunch of those, and a uh, big reason why I won. 
I will always be a fan of bringing a running back to the party because they, like you said, not fluke, not even fluke plays, but turning a two yard run into a four yard run, or oh. know, being able to score inside the two yard line is such a big deal. Right. And I saw that with some serious with that Eddie George man. You, I don't know if he killed you with Eddie George, but he was killing the whole tournament with Eddie George. Right. And just feels, I mean, that just goes to show you, man, that Joe Mixon won the tournament. You probably had the highest cap on running back with 85. I mean, a lot of people were using the shitty version of Joe Mixon. But to have yeah. uh, 85 cap really, and it, and it, you know, it really paid off because when you did break it, you didn't get caught. You know, it was pretty much yeah. GG going to the rack. No. Yeah, and another thing is, like, yeah. like, even if, like, you have the runs, like, boxed up, like, I'd get three yards guaranteed. Like, I would never lose yards. Like, I'd be okay with the second and seven, like, to start it off, like. It's going to be – like, if I get, like, a three-yard drag, it's a third and four now, and I, I'm okay with that. So, like, it just – you know, the way, I, the way I played, I just needed a good running back to give me, like, three yards guaranteed and then maybe more if he gets wild. Sure. Now, now, let's go talk about your defense because I'm, I'm looking at it now, and, and I, I'm kind of in love with it because it's just super versatile. I mean, you can go from pretty much anything because you have D4 that can kind of be – a middle linebacker if you want him to be, but at the same time, he can be a defensive end. So talk about yeah. what went into picking all these players on defense. Well, you always want hit power, I feel like, and your outsides and your safety. So, like, I feel like um, Sean Taylor and Adams were the obvious choice for the outside guys. They have, they're both, you know, 90-plus hit power. They're both fast, I think 94 speed, and they both made plays for me. So uh, that was obvious. And then at safety – you know, obviously 94 speed won't do it, so I had Fuller and Humphrey, 96 speed each, so just so they don't get bombed. Mm-hmm. And they, they both have, like, 82 hit power. So, you know, if, if they go up against Tyree Kill or Andre Roberts, they're just going to hit them and maybe force a fumble. But, you know, you know those, those four, like, were the biggest, like, the biggest playmakers on my team. Then Byron Jones was just there if I, had, uh, if I wanted to man him up on the slot receiver. He had, like, high agility, high man. And he's low cap, so I was like, he was the obvious choice. And he was a 93 overall, so he was tier three sprinter, tier times two sprinter. So, okay, and, then, and then the four down lineman, you Jason Taylor, Curse, Gabe Martin, the God, and then you probably put D four at the end, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I just want to speed on the outside with like a uh, pretty good finesse move. So D four and Curse were like the obvious picks. It definitely worked. And then obviously, I think everybody had physical Ed Reed was a monster the whole tournament, oh. only 57 cap. Oh yeah, bro. Like he's like literally the be- the best player on my team. I'd say uh, he can do everything. Like he would just he'd stop the run for me. He can make tackles. He would just man up on anybody if he wanted to. Like I just what I what you can find me doing like during that tournament. I literally put him in the middle of the field, and if they flip their bunch or flip their bunch, he's just in the middle of the field. So I'm just gonna keep manning him up on the guy I want him to man up on. So there instead of like you know what I mean, like that's where I just put I just put him in the middle and just have him like make plays for me, and I just use it with Daniel. Yeah, what's crazy about and you talk about that people flipping bunch like you'll do a bunch of adjustments and then they'll flip bunch. Yeah. Right, but then their adjustments don't change. But if you flip your defense, you got to redo everything. It's yeah. A little different. It makes it a little bit tougher on defense. I think that's something. Either if I flip my defense, my adjustments should be the same, or if they flip their offense, it should kind of reset all their routes. You know, yeah. The other. But we'll, I mean, we'll see. But you're obviously able to handle that. Talk about Damian Tomlinson, man, because 43 cap, I know he's fast and can get the sprinter. You need a linebacker that can get sprinter. So he can yeah. run up to all the way up to, what, 93 speed? Yeah, 93 speed with high zone, and he can hit. So that's all you really need from a linebacker, although he was, like, pretty small. It can be hard to make plays with him. I felt like he was just too good for the cap, oh, yeah. you know, to not use. Yeah, for sure, and the speed and then being able to get sprinter, you know, at yeah. one spot was definitely a – because that's the hardest thing about trying to get two or three sprinter and salary cap. Is you kind of get yeah. it between him and D Ford and then your D line. It definitely, I mean, it worked out because you have all these players and Sean Taylor, man. That's you got to have Sean Taylor on the field. Yeah. I feel like obviously a lot of people had the physical Sean Taylor, that ninety six speed or whatever the hell he was. But for you to have the real Sean Taylor, talk about what you know, why you chose this Sean Taylor over, you know, a lot of people had obviously Jamal Adams, but then a lot of people just had corners. So talk about Sean Taylor. Well, I just made I just made sure that my first of all, like I ran I think I ran cover three a little too much for me to use Ronnie Lott and Darwin James like the rest of those dudes. Yeah, so yeah, like I if I ever deep quarter them, like they just get burnt every single time. So I had to get some speed out there. But the reason I use this Sean Taylor over the fifty nine Sean Taylor is like I just don't want to get babied around. If they pass if they pass it to Sharp, 
you know, I need my dudes to just lay them out and, you know, make sure that they don't want to do it anymore. So Sean Taylor, you know, was an obvious choice. And he had high zone too. So. And he has the clutch trait. Mm-hmm. The clutch trait. Sean Taylor will always make plays for you in big games. Remember that chat. And if you're listening to this on SoundCloud, man, make sure you check on YouTube because I do have this team up right now. You can look at all these cards and everything. I will put the link to this team in the what you call it in the description of all this. If you're playing salary cap right now, this is the team to use. I actually think I want to go ahead and duplicate this exact team or something oh. along the lines of it. But I, yeah. I could never run. And right now, I, I'm I'm the guy like Kiv that has the 150 cap quarterback and the 100 cap wide receivers. But now looking at how well this team's put together, got me rethinking that. And that's where salary cap starts, man. If you're not going to have the right team. You're going to struggle yeah. really to do anything from there. I mean, that that's the beginning of the battle with salary cap, and that's yeah. why we love it. Not only do you have to play the game, you have to make your team, and that's the first step, and I thought Drain really was prepared with the team. Uh, who helped you the most getting ready for this tournament? So we got – it's for sure Ghost and Rage, those two. Ghost and Rage. Go, Ghost, yeah, Ghost actually, like, for the most part, he helped me out with that defense. Like, I kind of took that defense from him, but the offense, I just – uh, my offense is like totally different from his, like the, the roster wise. I see. Yeah, Ghost isn't the one that had Joe Mixon, so you definitely, yeah. uh, but not, you definitely save cap between the quarterback and the wide receivers from pretty much everybody yeah. else. But so it worked out for you. But uh, shoot, uh, let's talk about going into the final game. You know, you had been to, you had just lost the finals. You were what one and two in MCS finals before that. Yeah, lost to Kevin Kotoba. So talk about the um, the thought process going into the final game. So like, just gameplay wise, like, what am I gonna do? Yeah, like, what's your bo- both gameplay oh. wise and both like just your mental because obviously yeah. you couldn't lose three finals. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's, it's definitely going into this is definitely way more pressure on you than there was on Spoto. Yeah, for sure. I mean, sure. I- once you lose two, bro, like you, you just can't go one and three. That's just horrible. Yeah. And I, that was just my mindset. I was like, bro, I cannot lose again. If I lose again, bro, I was like, I got to get out of here. I might retire. Yeah. But so I just put a lot of pressure on myself to win this game. I don't know. And but gameplay wise, I felt like I had a really good strategy for Spoto. Yeah. Uh, I seen I seen I seen Spoto play Skimbo. Mm-hmm. The problem with Skimbo when he played defense on Spoto, he was, he was a little too predictable. Like he would run the same thing over and over and over. So I just took the defense, that one defense that Skimbo ran on Spoto, and I just mixed it up with the defense I, I like usually run with trips tight end. So like, I just gave him different looks every single time. And like Spoto is not a crazy offensive player. Like if you give him different looks, he's going to struggle here and there. And like he's not a crazy trips tight end player. So I knew it would work for him. I just like it was a matter of fact that he could stop the run. And I knew he would, he would be a good like pass defensive player. So, you know, I had to run the ball a lot. Now, I will tell you, obviously, to me, the biggest play of this game was this pick six. I don't know. You got the stream up? Are you watching? Yeah, I'm watching. Okay. So, because he doesn't do bad to start the game. He doesn't really, uh, because he, obviously, he played against that defense that Skimbo ran. This is going to be the third time. This over G, you know, no base align, and pretty much uh, just flirt with blitzing that corner and not blitzing him. So, for that, just because of that, he has to push yeah. somebody over every time. Which the, yeah. the one thing about Trips tight end to me is that that was the problem with it last year. Not so much this year, but it really didn't have the same quick snap abilities as Bunch. Yeah. Where you had to motion this guy every time to make it that effective. You know, and that's yeah. something that, that he he started to get the feel for against Skimbo. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later. Definitely started getting the feel for it against Skimbo. But he started this game fairly well against you, man. I thought he really had a lot of momentum. But as you said about Skimbo, Skimbo does run the same defense pretty much primarily most of the game. Whether Whatever his plan is, that's his plan, and he sticks to it. Where, you know, if you want to use over G, you have to use it to the best of his ability. And the best thing about it is it's so versatile. And, and to shoot. Yeah, the, the way he was really driving me in the first possession, like, literally were all hitches and curls. Yeah. So I was kind of getting frustrated. So I was just happy he made that one mistake, honestly. And the mistake that Spoto made to me was just something that he hadn't done pretty much the whole game against Skimbo on all the games. And I told Skimbo this in the middle of the tournament. I said, Spoto's really only dot that he's comfortable throwing and he'll try on this play is just this out route, this motion in out route. That's pretty much his only like dot that he's really comfortable throwing. 
And this is the play that caused him to pick six, is that when he first makes this read, and you'll see here, he wants to throw the ball over Randy Moss. Everybody wants to throw the big play. Nobody wants to throw the check down. And he yeah. waits too long to see, you know, can I throw this check down? Or, but damn. Yeah, he was actually a drag to the tight end. And he just waited to see, there goes your open field stick ability, which is the worst in the nation. But... What do you want me to do right there? You want me to one cut, bro? Yes, I want you to, I want you to do something. You got to score there. You got a one-on-one with the quarterback. But I feel like yeah. he waited to see if the deep route was going to be open. Whereas in the other games against Skimbo, he if his check down was there, he was going to take it right away. Pretty much. Yeah. That's pretty much what cost him right there. And that you said that was uh, Marlon Humphrey that made this huge play? Yeah, 95 zone. Yeah, that was pretty wild, actually. It really was definitely, he really jumped that. And that spin move was just, I tell you guys, if you guys watch Journey play, anytime he's around somebody, he just spams B. And some of the times it works, other times it looks ugly. That was one of the times. Yeah, you got you to gotta do something there. You know, you got the whole yeah. field. I'm saying it's definitely a ability to make move. But now you get a pick six. Not a pick six, but a pick and a, and a decent return. You're damn near in field goal range. Talk about what the that, – that's a huge momentum shift. It's a huge way to start a big game. Yeah. I mean, then I come into this, and I know Spoto never mends up his safeties. So it's never going to be run support from his safeties. His safeties are never going to shoot down. Mm-hmm. So all, I just know that it's going to be me versus the linebackers. And, and then, you know, versus versus yeah. Kratoba and Little Man. They made it a little tougher on me because they would just man up their safeties every single time if they thought I was going to run the ball. Nah, but Spoto literally know? gave it to me every time. But how did you know that he was never one man up his safety? I, I played I, – I just seen him play against Skimbo and everybody else. Like, he would, never, he would just man up – he just has three really good linebackers. He has Edmonds, Sean Taylor, and Ed Reed. Yeah. And he would just, like, get a justy with those two and then use a Sean Taylor. And he would never – like, he would just have, like, a base coverage. He'd either run, he'd either run cover three or cover two with those guys manned up. So, and there you go. And the one thing I'll tell people about tight, and this is what th- the thing that I hate that he does, Spoto, and what allows this inside zone to go for a touchdown, is that he baselines tight. Yeah, what that's horrible. What baseline tight, Jenny, you notice, is that now the corners are not in run support at all. So, mm-hmm. when you baseline tight, you pretty much, these two corners are doing absolutely nothing against the run. So, what that has allowed is that pe- he'll, he'll block all these guys, so you'll block all these guys in the box. And right now, he only has three, three, six people. Seven, if you count this nickel corner, which really isn't doing anything because he's all the way to the right. Running's going to the left. So he only has really six people in the box. And look how much many people you have in the box. Five, six, seven, eight, nine people in the box to block. So what happens there, because he base aligned, which if you're going to base align tight, you've got to move these guys halfway in. They can't be all the way out there. So both the, the run on first down and the run on second down, most of somebody over, and somebody gets right up to the safe. You do a great. That was actually probably the best thing you've ever shown, and it was so subtle where you just went back in and allowed that guard to get to the yeah. safety. 97 speed mixing, pop back outside for a touchdown. So you got to take a notes, man. When I play against tight, I will never base a line for that exact reason. It makes the run so much better when you base a line, right? Yeah. Literally, this is a numbers game. Yeah. Just, you have the numbers on them. And, and the one thing about Journey is that you let Journey run for touchdowns, he's never going to lose. if He's, he's the two running plays, and he's got seven points already. Yeah. Oh, sure. Some people, you know, you might give up like a 10-yard rush, and they'll just stop running. No. Like, uh, if they just give me the rush, I'll just keep going. That's the difference between like a runner and a passer, I feel like. Oh, yeah, for sure, but now you got seven points. Now it's, it's you know, now you're, like, your foot is, like, not on his throat, but it's getting close to where if I can get one more, you know, one more touchdown or one more stop, it's going to get really dark for him. Yeah. And then, oh, I know, like, Lil Men and Smoke, I feel like they're, like, similar players. Yeah. Like, not, like, gameplay-wise, but, like, in the mental. Like, once I scored that touchdown, I got to stop on both of them. I literally put on aggressive the next possession, and they both did a hard stat. No, so, so they start rushing, they start playing. Yeah. They start playing out of character. Out of character, you see, uh, you see Spoto calling the four verts right here, lobbing the ball up. That would have been a pick too if it wasn't an overthrow. Sean Taylor yeah. just want to take that. I feel like, and the one thing about this game, if you get a one on one like that where you're not burnt, it's a pick. But if you're burnt yeah. by a step, it's a rack egg. So it's pretty much. I mean, I, I have no problem with with that as far as the game's concerned, where it's either a pick or a rack egg, and that, that definitely yeah. probably would have been a pick. Yeah, that actually was match. Oh, Actually, it was match right there. So yeah, and I shit. Yeah, so that's why another reason why you know I couldn't have Ronnie Blount and Derwin James out there. Mm-hmm. I needed my speed out there. And right there, you, you see him like he's just rushing. Like he's not even taking his hitches anymore. He's looking for the crosser. Yeah, the hitch was there. He could have just threw it. Got got you know four to ten yards. Boom. 
looking rough. But I mean, we've all been in games like this, you know, where it's where it's a blowout on both sides, you know, and it's like, at what point do you feel like now he's just on aggressive? You're just killing him. At what point do you feel like the game is cooked? Like you want? Like once I feel like once you're up two possessions, and uh, with ball, it's over. But I don't know. Like here, I I knew the game wasn't over. Like once I got this. Once I got the stop right here, I just knew like he was gonna struggle the whole time. I could just tell he was gonna struggle the whole time the way he was playing. Mm -hmm. But I just knew I had to just keep playing the same way. I had it. If I play conservative, I knew if I just like let go of the gas, he might come back. I just had to keep playing the same way the whole time. Oh, yeah, for sure. And um, shoot, there we go. No, he just audible the inside zone. Legit, he just stays baseline. He doesn't even flip, so he doesn't have the nickel on that side. Yeah. That's just. That's all bad. You're not even going to run the first play. You're feeling yourself. Okay. I throw it out. I'm pretty sure. Well, that was a nice little play, though. Okay. Okay. That's why I told you. I said, man, I was just watching to steal your dots. And he just pretty much ran the ball at will pretty much every play. And yeah. That's one thing that Mo said about you, too. Like, that a lot of times you would get too conservative and run the ball. But obviously, when you pass the ball the first play, that shows that, man, you're trying to go out here and get – Score get it points. done. Yeah, you go high ball streak. I got to add that to the arsenal. High ball. Uh, that, that's the, that was just an inside pass. Like, I don't know why I did all that wall stuff. Uh -oh. well, I like to set up. I mean, I know you learned some things, you know, over here watching the stream. Drag, <laughs> slant, fade. You know, that's definitely a, definitely a killer setup. And now it's pretty much just get a field goal, go up two possessions. Man, that's – and you'll be feeling good. Especially with his photo. He's a defensive player. He – you know, he plays off his defense, confidence off his defense, so. I, I think a lot of people are like that. And you go 14 nothing, and it's like, yeah. it's like, the, talk about, I mean, obviously you had the game versus Kratobin. Last year, the game versus Kiv were definitely tight games. And talk about being in a game where, I guess both your belts have been pretty much blowouts, right? Yeah. But, but the Kiv game was close for, not, it wasn't a blowout this fast. You know, y'all yeah. were going back and forth in the Madden Challenge, but talk about, like, the relaxing feeling of, you know, winning a game like this. Oh, like, for the first half, I mean, it really wasn't real relaxing, like, when I was up 14-0, but, like, once it was, like, 21-0 and I, and I knew I got ball at half, I literally wasn't even, like, I don't know. I felt like I could have done anything, honestly, and just, like, I would have won the game. Yeah. I, I, I just felt like I could just pass every play. I could just punt in the ball. I just felt so confident right there, and I just knew that I was going to win. So, I don't know. Oh, yeah. I mean, for sure, then you get to punt it. Then you just get out of the game. Yeah. yeah so that was That's how I felt he was in. Like, I felt like he didn't want to play anymore. I felt like he knew he knew it was over. Yeah. And he just didn't want to play anymore. definitely gets, gets to that point sometimes. I mean, we all got blown out before. I'm saying it's just definitely a rough feeling. And then you can see, you can see by the plays he calls that it's like just kind of like, eh, let me get out of here. And then you pick him on this little hitch route. Yeah, look at his route come off, post, yeah, curl, yeah, and a streak. He's pretty much kept awesome. you in the same spot for the most part. You know, and it's just, it, it, and it goes fast, man. When you're playing a game and you start getting blown out, it really goes fast. And, then, I mean, that's, like I said, you got him out of there. And the one thing about the man bowl was great. It was a great way to end the season. Everything went well. But pretty much, I guess, it's rough. The two salary cap tournaments have definitely been blowouts in the last game. Nah. But, you know, that happens sometimes, and, and, you know, it's nothing you can do about it. Shoot, you'll take a blowout every time of the week, and uh, yeah. it worked out. So, like I said, we want to know, is the Madden 19 champion going to get a new bed? Or what are we doing? King size, bro. King size. You know, I'm, I'm taking a picture next week. King size next week. Are you going, like, with the, with the memory foam? What are you dropping, like, seven grand on a bed? Like, what's up? I mean, grand. Hell no. Nah. Oh, you want to get a cheap bed? I'm getting the cheapest version now. The cheapest king size they got? Yeah. Jeez. Right there, by the way. I knew I knew he was going to be in cover, too. Just knowing him. Four verts. Yep. Best play in the game. Got to have it. Bang. <laughs> yeah. But that's like it. So you got a new bed. Uh, talk about complexity and talk about what they've done for you this year and you feel like they have helped you and has it been a good decision in your man career to join a work like that? Sure. Definitely a good decision, first of all. Yeah. You know, obviously, getting a salary is going to make you do this full time. Like, it, it's hard to do all this with the, without a salary. Mm -hmm. So that's going to help out, obviously. And then 
you know, they've obviously been helping with, you know, Twitter, all that stuff. You know, every time I go live on Twitch, you know, they'll always, you know, say something about it. So, I don't know. I feel like then I got the support from the Cowboys. It's, like, all good with them. So. Okay, so now that you won a belt, you made another finals. So, the price got to go up next year, right? Sure, hopefully, right? And the viewers were up. Yeah, the viewers are up. You got them 100,000 people to watch Madden. So, like, the, you got to go into – when the next season starts, like, listen, I'm Journey. You know, I'm the biggest name in Madden. I'm Team Disney. I need to double my pay. You know what I'm saying? That, I mean, that's only right. I mean, if you ever need a manager, trust oh, me. Oh you're, saying, oh, you're saying with the team? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Oh, I thought you were talking about MCS. I was like – Oh, well, listen, we're going to have MCS roundtable during the offseason, all right? We're going to get you on right. here. We're going to have, like, five, six people. We're going to have a lot of MCS air them out. You know, podcast. But oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For you personally, like, well, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I already know. Yeah, yeah. Man, you gotta let them know. Like, listen, I'm Journey. I'm the biggest name in Madden. I'm the best man player in the last two years. So, it's, shoot. Yeah. What? Anyway, so what's next for Journey after you got two belts? The season's over. What's What's the move going from here going into Madden 20? Sure, I'm gonna do the I'm gonna do the things that none of the other belt winners are doing. I'm going stream. For stream? the most part, you I'm kinda, going. You kind of been bullshitting on the streams. No, no, because kind of. it's because of tournaments. I promise. Like, I can't. Okay. Well, real ones stream and play tournaments, you know. But you'll get there once you get, you know, once you get a little bit better, you'll get there. You know I'm saying that not everyone, gonna... not everyone could be problem and dub die w man. Not, so long as you know, you know. But I mean, <laughs> that's how it is. But yeah, I mean, definitely, if you can continue to capitalize off this, it's definitely, uh, you know. In your best, like you're the biggest name in the world now, and I don't think that's gonna change, cause I don't think there's any man they can put out that you would be ass at, and the, I I really don't know what they could do. So I'm assuming Journey is going to be a top three player for the next ten years. So that's definitely how it's gonna be. But also, I had you on here. What are some things that you want in Madden 20? Like, what are some things that you wish are in Madden 20 that aren't in this game or improvements mm-hmm. through the two games? I feel like. To make sure to to make sure like users are back. I don't know, like the high ball. They need to take that all the way out the game. I don't know. I feel like the if they make ball. a yeah, I feel like if they're like under a route and they lurked you, I feel like a high ball shouldn't bail you out and they shouldn't get animation never I because mean, of high ball. I feel I the know. high ball is kind of bad too, but isn't it weird to say let's take that out because you should be able to throw the ball high. And be able to use them tall receivers and, and, and so yeah. on and so forth. So it's a tough balance, really. Oh, yeah. maybe like if you highball it, like there should be no threshold for a highball where you just never overthrow it again. Like you should be able to, you should you should overthrow it like maybe fifty percent of the time if I'm underneath it. Like you, it shouldn't be accurate every time. Oh yeah, for sure. And I feel like the only time is really like fifty percent is in the end zone. Yeah. You know, and, and and there should be a different like. It should get to the point where, okay, if I want to throw a high ball, all right, let me use Tom Brady. And he'll never overthrow the thing. You know, he'll put it on a point every time. But uh, Oh, so you're saying the pocket passers should never yeah, overthrow it. Yeah, it should be a difference in passing the ball between, you know, the Tom Brady and Michael Vick. Like, there should, like there's really not enough difference between those two quarterbacks to use one of the pocket passers. But if you went ahead and said all the high balls and low balls would be 100% accurate, now that's a reason to use one of the pocket passers, really. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they can do that too. Shoot, make Tom Brady accurate, make Lamar Jackson inaccurate. And shoot, I don't know. I don't know what people will use. Do you think people will still use the mobile QBs, or do you think they'll still use Tom Brady? I think you'll always use a mobile quarterback. Um, but in regs, if a team is good, you see a lot of people use Tom Brady this year in regs because the Patriots were that good. So uh, it's definitely. I, I really think there should be a there should be a difference in the throw accuracies. I think that's the biggest, uh, one of the biggest reasons why the game has kind of fell off is that, you know, there's really no difference between a great passer and a, and a mobile quarterback. There's really not that big a difference. So you might as well go with the one that's faster, really. Yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like, I feel like if they make someone faster, like, this dude, Michael Vick has 90-some deep throw, 90-some mid, 90 short. Yeah. Like, he shouldn't be able to be that high with 99 speed. And then be only 105 cap. Yeah, for sure. And, and, and a lot of it, we, we talk about Madden in re- relation to salary cap and competitive and stuff. And a lot of that isn't really the the focal point for the most part. You know, these guys want to sell the game to little kids and, you know, so on and so forth. So, but yeah, I, I really do wish there was a difference between, um, uh, you know, the 
mobile quarterbacks and the pocket passers. And that's pretty much what that news is about the abilities for the quarterbacks next year and the players next year. Did you see any of that? What do you think about that? Uh, I don't like it. I don't know. A lot, I mean, Patrick Mahomes being able to throw 80 yards is not a good idea. I don't know. That would be dumb. Yeah, but, if I mean, he, I guess he can kind of throw far in real life, you know. And I, I don't know. I think and the one thing that in, in the article that was said was we want to balance out, you know, good quarterbacks that can pass in the pocket also compared to, you know, mobile quarterbacks. And to me, that comes down to just make the make the ratings work. You know, make my accuracy yeah. matter as opposed to giving my man some superpowers. Yeah. Like, you shouldn't be able to, to need a ability to see the difference between Tom Brady and Michael Vick. For sure, for sure. I'm definitely okay. I mean, I, mean, I think we're pretty much all on the same page. Uh, we wish the quarterbacks were a little bit different uh, ratings-wise. But um, ultimately, I mean, the year's over. So can you give me, like, your overview on Madden 19? What? Did you like the game? Was this obviously a successful year for you? But the, do you think ultimately the game was good? And I feel like I feel like shoot. I don't know. Maybe my I think Madden 19 is better than Madden 18 for sure. I don't know. Madden 18 was god awful. I feel like air trucking, 91 zone, hard flats, C route glitching. I feel like that was the worst Madden ever. And crazy people putting that ahead of Madden 19. But Madden 19, I feel like <clears throat> I don't know. It's like people are like complaining about defense and salary cap, but they just never spent cap on defense. Yeah, and I think it's just their fault for them playing like that. Yeah, for sure. And I think I think a lot of the cap was a little bit bad. I think I think the defensive players should have kind of been half of the cap that they were. You know, whereas yeah. you know, like even you had you had good defensive players, but you didn't have the best defensive players. You know what I mean? And. I think that if you would have cut the salary cap in half of the defensive players, it would have made for the game to be a little bit better. Because I, I honestly, as much as people killed Madden 19, I don't think it's that horrible. I agree with you a thousand percent that last year was way worse. You yeah. know, there was people able to score just because they could air truck, run somebody over, and my whole team would stop and they would score a touchdown. So I definitely think Madden 19 was a better than Madden 18. I think a lot of people, especially the negative people, always get caught in the moment of this game is the worst ever. Uh, but in actuality, it's definitely a step up from last year. And and we'll see what they do as far as incorporating these new features and, and getting a new game out. Because I did talk to Rex, and he oh. said they're real, way more concerned about putting new features in the game and selling it to a new audience rather than perfecting the old game. So we'll see where they go. I'm excited about it. But like I said, yeah. you, you want to get on your grind for your streaming and the YouTube and everything. You want to play regs or you want to go to Dallas? Oh yeah, I'm for sure. I'm. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm. I'm leaning. It's like ninety percent. Ninety percent. I'm going. Ninety percent. I mean, uh, listen. At the end of the day, it's going to be fun. Race is a different mode. Uh, it's definitely going to be the Tyreek Hill show. So uh, yeah. I'll definitely find the best ways to bomb every coverage out of out of wide trips. You know. So I might just. I, I think the best way. Oh, right you gonna compete? Put him on a fade. I mean, if it depends. If it's the EA tournament, I, I'm probably not. But if it's just. You know, if it's just a Ricky Dink neighborhood, I mean, it's 25K. You never know. I get a couple fumbles. You know, I'm, I'm right there. You know, I learned yeah. two hitches in a post out of tight offset. I've seen enough, you know. And yeah. audible down a little bit more to uh, tight slots. I need to do that into my arsenal a little bit. Yeah. Um, shoot. I mean, but, well, we're happy with the way Mad 19 ended, really. Uh, it was a long year for sure, and uh, it definitely ended on a positive note. I don't know what they did to get 100,000 people watching these games. I mean, I'm glad they did it. Obviously, oh, yeah. some type of view by and, or, you know, <laughs> you know, embedded viewers. But it looks good. You know, and I've said this on the stream a lot, man. It really looks good that um, they added those viewers and that they, you know, made it look more presentable. I think that always, regardless of how good it is, everything, when you see 80,000 people or 90,000 people, it looks better than 14,000 people. You know, and I'm glad they did that. Uh, and it really made for good entertainment. It made for a good man game. All you guys really balled out. Uh, Journey kind of just blew everybody out. But I don't know. Do you, do you feel like you're getting the Tiger Woods effect where people are kind of afraid to play you or play worse against you? I mean, so I, I don't know. You don't know? You don't, uh, you know? I, I, I can't tell if, if I'm just playing good or if they're just playing bad. I don't know. I think if you if you keep playing, obviously you're gonna have an allure in your name where people will play down because they're playing you. You know, especially if you keep up the consistency, 
and keep up becoming the defensive player that you were, it's definitely going to uh, definitely gonna keep growing and people are going to start being afraid to play you. I don't really want to play you. I mean, I'll be honest. I'm like, man, I don't want to play Junior. This shit's annoying. I don't know what's coming. I don't know uh, who he's going to man up or how he's going to blitz seven people or, you know, what running play he's going to run this play. So, shoot, it, yeah. definitely, it definitely makes it hard to play against when you already established yourself as one of the best. But, uh, yeah. shoot, is there anything else you want to talk about? Mm, nah, not really. Can we get back to the Pro-Am action? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. we back tonight. So it's Pro-Am season for the rest of the offseason. We got to get the team back, man. I, I designed these beautiful jerseys for our Pro-Am team, and they pretty much, you know, are not getting used. Oh, yeah, we back. Don't worry. Right. 11 p.m. tonight. 11 p.m. tonight. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so we shall see, man. But I, I really appreciate you joining, man. I, this is the fourth Madden player or Madden champion that I brought on this year. Everybody's been supportive of the show. I really appreciate it, man. All you guys, whether it's YouTube or SoundCloud, all you guys probably already follow Journey. He is the leader of the Disney gang and the best man player in the world right now. And that can't be questioned. And like he said, that's the best part of winning the belt. Can nobody really question you anymore? He is the best player in the world. And Journey, I really appreciate you joining the show. All right. Appreciate you having me here. Uh, there he is, man. Journey Joker, the man champion, the 19 year old assassin. Like I said, he's the best player in the world, and I've said on Twitter a lot when I watch him play, man, if you guys follow me, if you don't, hit the link below. It's in the description of both, man. Drenny really is super impressive, man, and it's not really about... And so many people talk about, man, man players run the same play, blah, 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 and Drenny is the complete opposite of that. If you see him play, and, and being a man player myself, as I see him make high rounds, make defensive adjustments, I kind of think about what's going on in his head, and, and the kid has been super impressive. All year long, so I'm definitely happy for him, man. He is the best man player in the world, and it's pretty much uh, pretty much been the best man player the last two years. Just consistent, and you know, as far as he's got to be the number one man right now. As far as I mean, Skimbo's obviously my guy, but I mean to have you know two belts in two years and being four finals in the last two years, only two years competing, and he's done that much, man. He's definitely got to be the number one player. We got a lot of stuff, a lot more stuff to go over, man. We're already 40-plus minutes into the show. Like I said, I appreciate Journey the Champ checking in. But there was a lot of stuff that's going on, and he won that tournament so easy. There wasn't that many games to go over I'm talking to him. I asked him, what was your hardest game? He probably said Kratobin, and I didn't think that game was that hard for him. Obviously, Lil' Man and his photo games were blowouts. And, I mean, but ultimately, the tournament went great. I hope all you guys watched it. But I got to talk about, I mean, the game of the week, game of the tournament was Spoto versus Skimbo. You know, and, and it's a lot to talk about about this game, man. It's a lot to really, uh, really focus on, and it's a lot to really dissect. And it's kind of a two-game thing because it's two different, it's two different, uh, two different games. They had to play in. They had to play in um what you call it. They had to play in the group play. Then they had to play in single elimination. And I will tell you this, Skimbo is the the, the best player that I play against, you know, without a doubt for me personally. And uh, but the more you play him, Skimbo is the type of person. The more you play him, the easier it's going to get. The uh, the more you'll get a hold of what he wants to do on offense and defense. And you could see that with Spoto as the games went on. You know, you really got the, the feeling, you got the vibe that, you know, maybe he's not as comfortable or, you know, he's starting to get more comfortable. And I definitely got those vibes as them to, as the first game went on. And obviously in the second game, I just felt his comfort level, having a plan on what to do, definitely uh, definitely changed throughout. And I'm going to try to find, I have the, the, the main game that we want to talk about up already. I'm already ready to watch that, but I definitely want to see the first game just to show you guys like where I felt like the game kind of took a turn because the first game Skimbo was Skimbo was kicking his ass, you know he really was, and I I felt like man this is definitely going to look this is this is going to be an easy win for Skimbo. As you say, I'm, I'm gonna just show you what Skimbo's defense was. It was just cover two. I'll tell you this right now. Cover two, this guy's blitzing. This is over G. 
this guy's blitzing. If you're listening on SoundCloud, it's just OG is a four man front. Doesn't baseline his corner, so he can blitz too. So you kind of have two slot corners, six man rush. And this is how, if you want to play Trips tight end, this is a great way to play against Trips tight end defensively. Gives him a lot to think about. So what happens with Skimbo pretty much user this guy and this guy in the middle of the field. He'll have cover two on his side. This guy right here in the yellow zone to guard any like quick hitches, drags, anything quick over the side of the field. So pretty much when you're rushing six people and you have three zones over here, this is pretty this side of the field is gonna be tough to throw to. And you have another safety right here. The screen is zoomed. Oh yeah, I can Oh yeah, yeah. Well I, I can barely see it on my screen either. Oh yeah, there we go. Let me go ahead and make it a little smaller. Pause. Technology. The thing is, when you go from when you go from uh, YouTube or you go from YouTube to e to Twitch, the screens are always a little different. So pretty much, Skimbo would do this, and and you see, Spoto has three points, and this defense really gave Spoto a little bit of trouble early in the games, you know, and and this was his plan against Trips tight end, and it made you motion this guy every time, and. Sp Skimbo has to guard the side. And this became the one play that Spoto started getting comfortable throwing was the out route or the flat route or the zig route to the wide side of the field. And once he started getting a feel for what Skimbo wanted to do there and uh, so on and so forth, he does force him to field goals, holds him to field goals. I don't know what oh, Skimbo was taking a two-minute warning. But Skimbo scored points. That's what made this game where it was it – was, it was in his hands. like He had this game easily, but it's the same defense. It forces Spoto to motion somebody over to make him put this corner in coverage. So now he's only rushing five now when you motion somebody over. Still has to guard this flat area. And, and this was pretty much the plan. And I feel like Spoto really didn't start to get, really didn't start to get comfortable until late in the game. And Skimbo made one adjustment between the, the next two games pretty much. So on and so forth. When, when did he get the point where, oh my gosh, Compton. Here we go. But he gets to a point where he's a lot more comfortable. But Skimbo does go down here. I believe he scores another touchdown. I think this game gets to 23 to 9. Yeah, it really gets. Oh, he gets the fluky. That's definitely the fluky. But as you see, like he's gonna blitz this corner, and this is his man to pretty much guard. I don't know, and he puts this guy right here in a deep third. So this is wide open. Throw Shannon Sharp misses it. Deion Sanders pick six is this play. Now, as much as that was fluky, and and this is what impressed me about, and I will kill you, kill Spoto the day I die because I I think he can get a lot better mentally. And you see Skimbo's face right there, like he's not happy about getting that, but he feel, and I feel like that just won him the game. And most of the time, Spoto, y'all seen Spoto in the past. Like, he's been a powder. He's been a complainer, angry, blame the game type of person. For a play like that that was completely fluky, completely just screwed him, like, for him to come back in this game and really continue to uh, to go back, go on and win this game, it is 24 to 9. It's two minutes left in the third quarter. In the third quarter. This game, to me, was cooked. Absolutely cooked. And for him to come back after a fluke play like that, that showed me more than any 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 win he's ever had at a live event, online, whatever it may be. Uh, that was probably this is probably the most impressive thing he's done as a Madden player uh, for me personally. Is come back from down what, what is down 15 points with two minutes left was definitely huge. And uh, what, so he starts to get comfortable with this defense. He scores seven, so on and so forth. And then Skimbo comes down here and throws a pick six, I believe. I think this is the play right now, actually. Yeah. Fires right at a vert hook. Bad read. Takes it to the crib. Pick six. Are you kidding me? It's a pick six. I was just about to say, all those photos losing the game. And Spoto start the chess match right now. Skimbo changed his play. And Spoto adjusted perfectly to it. Gets a pick six. Hey, this is a different photo in this second game. I promise you that. So he definitely came all the way back. We're going to see another commercial. But my point was he came all the way back from that. So from there, I felt like he had a mental. He already had a little mental advantage. Skimbo said, damn, this kid locked me up in the second half. Came back and won the game. 
So fast forward to the next two days. They both make it out. They both make it to the final four. So they both make it to the final four. Blase blah. So Skimbo already on edge. Like this kid is ready to beat me. Blase blah. And so he already has some bit of a mental advantage on him. So the first play out, Skimbo does a pick. Which to me, I, I mean, I understand why we do a pick on the first play. Because I'll show it to you guys right here. He throws a pick on the first play because, whatchamacallit, because you never see a linebacker cover this route. Crossman Ed Reed f runs that long with Randy Moss and picks that off. Now, I don't know if he needs a faster Randy Moss, but we have been playing Madden all year, and tell me that baby Crossman can ever run with Pat Sale. It definitely ran with Pat, F Pat Sale for real. So that definitely, I'm not mad at that interception because you never think he's going to run all the way across the field, but he definitely did. So that definitely caught Skimble off balance a little bit. Yeah, so most people are way more comfortable. But this Ed Reed, I don't know if he, I don't even think he'd do it too bad. He just really covered it. So it's definitely, yeah, definitely 97 speed Ed Reed. And you saw he covered it. And that's when Spoto starts capping a little bit. What a way to start. And I, I will tell you this about capping. I don't think Spoto is a capper. I think he just talks shit. And that's the difference. And we're going to get into that a lot here on, you know, in the next couple minutes. As far as capping, what's acceptable, who can talk shit, how to talk shit. Definitely going to get into that because it's, it's uh, not, I don't want to say it's a big deal for me, but it's definitely some things that I can tell you guys. And I've always been good at talking shit. I've been better at talking shit than I have been at uh, playing Madden. Oh, at 17. Nah, nah, nah. No chance. He has no chance versus you. No chance. That's what Spoto says. You, like you know what I'm saying? I feel like as Spoto, shout out to Spoto. Spoto, if you want to hop into Discord, man, I'd love to talk to you. But uh, I feel like he talks shit, but he's not a capper. I feel like that's a big difference. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, Kevin, I'll get to that. I'll get to what's acceptable and what's unacceptable. But but I feel like he really, and you can tell this game, he really got comfortable against that defense. You know what I'm saying? Nah, Spoto, he not a punk. And this is the passes that Skimble started dropping that he was catching versus other people. But you can tell he's not comfortable. Spoto played unreal defense, and Skimble made some terrible passes, really. Oh, yeah, they definitely don't have... Spoto, he's not a capper, he'll, and you can get better at that, but he definitely talks shit. And this was a play. This is a play right here. Shout out to Cap, man. 22 months in one of the subs. But this was a play that had me... This was when I first was like, okay, he's not comfortable. Because I seen him play once. He don't run this play. Two drags, boom. And he should have got alerts right here. And that's what, why he lobbed the ball up, because he hesitated, and he overthrew that. <laughs> Look at Spoto, he's talking to Mike Skim. I'll tell you what, that's not gonna face Skimbo though. Oh yeah, for sure. We can definitely oh yeah. Uh, are you do you have my Discord Spoto? Do you have my Discord? Yeah, so but this is what I get to. Is that Skimbo's down 10. He's really getting bagged. Definitely was really getting bagged. Um, he definitely was capping. It's only the first quarter. It's, this is the Skimbo vibe, but this is Skimbo capping. It's him just air, looking at kids. That's skim, but that's that's his aura. That's what he does. Like he don't cap. Professional doesn't even respond to the trash talk. Gets back and locks in, and that's what you're gonna have I'm to saying, do if you want to like, get this back is in this vibe, game. Man. If you're Mike Skim, there's plenty of. That's We're his. That's his aura. Quarter. I'm saying that's what he did versus. A little bit under two minutes. Dang. Ah, Skim, he he get him way back. He broke it. He's staring at him. See, this is the Skim vibe. That's it. We've never seen this from Skim. He's getting emotional. He is not feeling the 
trash talk and he says it's a long game youngin and he's not lying we got fireworks tell me who do you got in the chat is skip making the comeback give me a one is Spono gonna hold on give me the two I just want to ask you having on. fun give me the three put your seat belts on your chest protector down reach back. now I'll show you this Skimbo to get up like this, and this is the game I go to about somebody really capping at him, and that's Ice. Right? That's the goal, Jamal Charles, not that Thursday. Now, Ice is ass, so it's a different vibe. You know what I'm saying? It's a different vibe when you're playing somebody that you want to beat as opposed to somebody you're worried about. And I feel like no matter who you're playing, I feel like you always got to keep the same demeanor. Whether you're afraid of a person or whether you're not, I feel like you have to keep the same demeanor. And when Skimbo stood up and did the extra shit, I feel like that's... And you can see Spoto look like, damn, you really stood up. Like, I really am in your head because you really just stood up out of nowhere. Like, I got Skimbo to do all this shit that he don't do. I'm definitely in his head. And that's what I'm saying. If you sit here and I'm saying, if you can let this kid cap at you or Bazooka Joe cap at you and you keep that same Skimbo stare that I'm Skimbo, I'm not going to look at you type of stuff, then that's definitely... Once you show... Or once you go to where I'm going to stand up and start capping, that's how you, you know, the kid really feels like, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll put you in the spot. Hold on. I see it. I see it. I see it. I see it. So I felt like that, once you break your character, and I'll tell you this, once you break your character, that's when you show the other person that you're getting to them. You know, once you react and in turn overreact, then you show your opponent that you're getting to them. And I feel like that's what Skimbo did by starting to cap. And I feel like this is where I let him down not being there because this is supposed to be my job. I saw, not only did I see Skimbo get capped at by a 17-year-old, I saw a little man just, just air Bugs out. Little man was just giving it to Bugs and blew him out. And I felt like I let down the team because I wasn't there to help them cap because they're not good at capping. Skimbo and Bugs, they don't cap. They're just good at the game. That's my job. I really equated it to Draymond Green. I am the Draymond Green of the team. I do all the dirty work. And without further ado, let me pull in the young, angry Spoto. You. Well, he's in the Discord, so whenever he turns his mic back on, we can talk to him. You know what I'm saying? So all I, right. Yo, What's up, W? What's up? What's the word, man? First, I want to congratulate you on your epic run in the Madden Bowl. I know it didn't turn out the way you wanted to, but you really elevated yourself and played at such a high level. Yeah, thank you. I definitely thought that I'd really break through by beating Skimbo twice, especially in the first game I was down. I was able to keep my composure. Okay, yeah, now, and you, I, I feel like you came into a point where all we do, like, you start realizing Skimbo is very similar, and once you play him enough, you start getting a vibe for what he's doing. Did you feel like every single drive you got more comfortable and, and became a better player against him? I mean, for the most part, it's the same thing every single play on defense. So it's by motion over, it kind of just took away what he wanted to do. But that was in the second half of the first game, that's what I did, so I just stuck with that in the second game. And on defense, I just kept doing the same stuff, and he was having trouble. For sure. Like, he really could have moved the ball that second game besides those two big steam streaks. Like, he didn't really, like, work at all. Yeah, for sure. It definitely was. Now, now I felt like it took you a little bit of time to get a hang of what he was doing on defense. I feel like it's... I told him between the games, I said, Spoto was not comfortable the first game. Give me one second, W. Give me one second. My mom's calling me. Uh-oh, see? That's the life <laughs> of a 17-year-old. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes your mother going to interrupt the interviews and stuff. But, uh, yeah, like I said, he thought he had a great game. Kept, yeah, we're going to get into that. We're going to get into that. And, and that's... That's something that I've always been uh, big on. And it just depends on... Like, we grew up playing basketball where you don't use... You, you don't, no matter what you're doing, you can talk all the shit in the world, but you can't use, there's pretty much two key words that you can't use pretty much in any form, whether it be basketball, football, or Madden, video games, whatever it may be. You really can't use those terms when you're talking shit, and that's bitch and pussy. Those two words. All right, my bad. Are you back? Yeah, yeah. All right, so what are we talking about? Oh, yeah. Like I said, I felt like it took you a long time to get kind of hip to what he was doing on defense, especially the first game. I didn't think you were comfortable offensively in the first game at all. Oh, no. I'm mean, not really that good on offense to begin with. So then I started getting screamed at, and I was a bit, like, shook in the first half. I figured it out. Yeah, like, the, the drive going into the half, 
I definitely feel like I was able to the ball by motion better, so I just stuck with that the rest of the time. Yeah, for sure. And it's definitely a pain in the ass when you run trips and when you start to feel like I have to motion this person over every time. Because me, mm-hmm. personally, I'm like, I'm, I would get too impatient to do that every single time. You know what I mean? And, and But that's what you had to do. And then once you kind of realized that, and I told him the one dot that you started to get real comfortable with was just that zig or that out route to the, the wide receiver side. Cause when yeah, you the, realize, yeah, I like, yeah, I feel like you once you start getting comfortable with that, that was your main, I'm just go to this. This is when I need to get four or five yards or six yards, I'm going to go to the same setup every time. Mm-hmm. And, uh, once you got to that, that was your only comfortable, real comfortable that because you're never going to throw into his user ever. You're never going to hide. It's just it's just too tough to make that guess. So you're going to try to stay away from that. But then defensively, talk about the plan defensively against Bunch. All right. So the plan that I was doing was I was trying to flip Ed Reed, have him on the opposite side of the solo guy. Kimbo wouldn't really streak him or put him on a comeback. So he was always going to be in the play. And then I would shade inside and down. And so he would be able to stick onto the pad sail route. Okay, so that's, uh, that's the glitch. Okay. That's well, yeah. I'm not really gonna be playing much anymore, so okay. that's basically how I would defend a bunch, especially versus him, because he wanted to do the same thing. He wanted to keep putting that post on the field every play. Yeah, between the pad sail post or that or, or the, the, the weaver yep. route. Okay, okay. So that so pretty much by doing that, you kind of just eliminated the, the lone wide receiver. So that's yeah. Much, yeah. All right. So that definitely worked. Definitely slowed him down a lot. And uh, talk about talking shit. So what, what's the, the mindset going in the game? You are playing probably the best player ever before this tournament. You know what I'm saying? So he has an aura. So he obviously, you know, has a lot more presence than you. And you just, you are the <laughs> underdog. So talk yeah. about talking shit. I mean, that's just what I was going to do no matter what. Like, that's what I do in almost every game. So that's just how I was going to act. But, I mean, I just do it mostly, like, for entertainment, too. Like, people found it entertaining. Like, it was the most watched game from out in Twitch, I think, ever. Yeah. So, like, I was just trying to be entertaining. And at the same time, though, I was just trying to get in your opponent's head. Like, once Skimbo got up, trying, he was acting like I've never seen him act. And then you see on stream, he makes the mistake and dives instead of sliding. Like, I knew he was out of his element. Like, he was not comfortable at all. Okay. Like, when he was getting up and yelling, I was like, wow, I really did get head. And he was denying it. And then he said he might lose. And, like, he didn't even believe in himself at that point. And I've never seen that before from Skimbo. Okay, so what you're saying is once you got him out of character, it gave you a little bit more confidence. Definitely. He, he kind of, like, almost showed weakness at that point. Okay. Well, he definitely, I, I, that's how I felt that I said, damn, okay. And, and you talked about the entertainment point. Do you feel a responsibility as a man player to add entertainment to the game? Uh, I mean, the game isn't exactly that entertaining for the average person. They don't really understand the depth of, like, what goes into playing defense and the playing offense you like bunch they saw all tournaments so i definitely think that being a competitive player you kind of have to bring your own like mojo into it to try and make it more entertaining okay I, and I, like i said i feel like you talk shit but you're not an elevated capper yet like you don't have the muhammad ali type of vibe to you You just talk shit you know once you start getting better because i felt like when he the second time after he took the lead and was standing up and saying all that dumb shit <laughs> uh, if you would have just said if you would have just said, like, <laughs> you, you way too loud to have a pink jersey on, or just clown him a little bit, you would have just killed him. And on top of that, like, because you had the vibe. Even when he captured you the first time, you were still laughing at him, like, I'm in your head. But once he took the lead, you had to look like he was, you know what I'm saying? You got to yeah. keep the same look all the time. Even when you're losing, because regardless, even when up 14-13, I feel like, um, you still got ball at half. The game was still at going that, good. At you that still point, I was up. still comfortable because he hasn't moved the ball that well. It was just like two big plays. He wasn't mm-hmm. putting like established drives together. So I still felt like he was boxed. If I was able to get like a couple of nice plays, I'll be able to be back in the game. It ended up happening. Oh, yeah, for sure. Definitely. The defense won the game. But I do want to talk about the one thing, like I said, while you was on the phone with your mother or whatever. Um, no matter where, what, whatever field I'm in and talking shit, whether it be basketball or football, because I've always talked shit. And it was better in basketball because I was the worst player and I talked the most shit. So it made people even more mad. But the one thing that, that really pisses people off with grown men, whoever it is, when you call people bitch and pussy or say suck my dick, does any of that, like, not that you said suck my dick, or but you did that's, say that's, bitch. That, that's what you said to me, so. He said, what he said to you? That's what you said to me. When? I don't even Bro, like a month or two ago. When I said that to you, I said what? 
suck my dick. That's what you said to me. No, yeah, I just suck a dick. Yeah, you know, but that's my point. Is that now Skimbo not the type of person to go running your mouth and no crazy shit like that? You know what I mean? He's not that type of person. But if you continually get comfortable saying that stuff, every once in a while you're gonna run into somebody that will go in your mouth because of that because of saying stuff like that so that's why I, I, i've kind of avoid try to avoid that type of stuff like i've always wound up when i'm in an instance like that i've always been on the uh, type to say dumbass or dickhead or so on and so forth like that uh, yeah i mean i was trying to curse less that game too because i did end up getting fined first so you got fined for what uh when ryan got the mr. onside Phil, kick and mr phil going you said fuck yeah uh yeah i think so because it was on stream they've had it in the highlights yeah so that, i mean it's definitely tough because and that's one of the reasons why i never got into getting up and capping like you guys did because i would curse entirely too much i already knew that like i, I know that going into games so that's why i never get into that because I, it will be a uh, you know Fine. Yeah. Yes. Fine. Mine would be very bad, and and people that watch me play on stream, that's I I curse at the little Johnnies down the street. That's just how it is, you know. And uh, that's definitely something I knew would happen if I started capping too much. So that's why I always try to stay away from that. And Skimbo, you guys both did a good job of capping really, uh, without cursing too much. And this is where Skimbo says his wild shit. Hey, look, look, I'm right here. He did a John yeah, Cena. It, Skimbo did a it, John Cena. You can't <laughs> see me. Hold on. He did a John Cena, you can't see me, and then hits you with, I'm going to grow you up. So what's going through your head when he hits you with this? I mean, at this point, it's a second and 18, and he just able to like do a seam streak right down the field. So I was really disappointed to let that happen. I'm not used to it, like, literally just starting nothing. Dude. I just kind of caught, like, doing absolutely nothing. So I was disappointed in myself, and then he gets up, but, like, at that point, still not the locked-in skimbo that you usually see. So I was, I was still felt pretty good. I was getting ball here. I was, I just, needed to go. and then I was getting ball after half, and I just had that, end of that go up two scores, and I felt really confident. It ended up happening. I want you to keep talking. So Skimbo hit you with a John Cena, and they say he's gonna grow you up today. Mm -hmm. But this is what I said. You now you had like the pouty face though. Like you can't talk about that shit, and then ever had the pouty <laughs> face. Like you gotta go back with the same smile. See, this is the pouty face. Like you gotta have the same laugh and you smile. And this is when you should have said, just sit your ass down, you got a pink jersey on. And then it would have been dead, and he would have been salty. See, this one, you got you to get more creative with your captain. You don't get in my head, you know who I am? Yeah. I, I, I did like the uh, get back in the booth line, though. No I thought that was tough. I might lose this game, but no one. And once Kimbo said, I might lose this game, I'll tell you guys, man, no, I don't care if you have zero confidence. I got I to bring you guys in here. I don't care if you are playing... LeBron James one on one. I don't care if you're fighting Mike Tyson one on one. You can never cap and say I might lose. That like, do you think Muhammad Ali ever said I might lose? But <laughs> like, that's never an option when you're capping. You know, and that just showed you if my opponent's capping at me and words out his mouth are I might lose, then I feel like I'm the man. Now, now talk about because people don't really know how much of this stuff could you hear. I mean, you can hear a lot right there. We were right next to each other, and we were pretty loud. Like, I could hear everything he was saying. So, I knew once he said that I might lose this game, I was like, this is not the normal skimbo. This is not the guy I expected. This is not the guy people were predicting to win the whole tournament, saying he's going to lose the game. Like, he's won three belts, and now he's saying he might lose the game in the semifinals. Yep. That, that's definitely, uh, that was definitely rough. And uh, at that point, after this, he didn't score another point. Did he? he didn't score another nah. point. 26-4. That was, that was the final. And I'll tell you, and I told him this, man, before he said, man, if you don't turn the ball over, you won't win the game. And I feel that's how I feel about this game. I feel like if he didn't throw these picks, he still wins the game, even though he was super bagged. I feel yeah. like he played good enough defense I'm, to win the game. I didn't play good offense at all. Yeah, but that, that's pretty much Yeah, I got to be out there, and the chat told me, and this is where I felt bad because he's not supposed to cap for himself. He's not good at capping, you know, and, and, and because – and I tell you how Skimbo thinks, man. He really cares about like how he looks, especially to the kids. He coaches his family and everything, so that's why he really doesn't cap. If you guys hear us play all the time, he'll cap and talk shit, but he really don't like doing that on the stage. So after that, I feel like he was thinking about it more than he was thinking about actually playing the game, and it showed because he definitely started uh, getting even more boxed in the second half there. Yeah, he was making, like, reads that he just doesn't usually make. I don't know what play it was. It was, like, on third and ten. Instead of just throwing the ball away when he had, like, 
nothing open. He throws directly at my user, and I was like, this this game's over. And he's just not, he's just not locked in. Yeah, so I definitely, I definitely felt like at that point I needed to be out there uh, to help him cap. And then once I saw Bugs get capped at by Little Man, that was definitely a rough. Uh, th- th- those two guys, I felt like I saw my friends getting beat up, and I couldn't do anything about it. But uh, what else I want to say? Um, so talk about going to the tournament, man. I, I, and I tell you this all the time, man. I feel like you care about everybody, what everybody think about you too much. Is that do you use that for motivation, or the, what, what's your thought process going into tournaments? Well, for this tournament, I really didn't prep at all. So from the time I, I came home from the challenge to the time I went to the ball, I only played four games in Madden. I really was not what? taking it serious at all. Why? Like, I played three versus D-Cross, one versus Henry. I truly just didn't care. Like, at this point, I was like, it's whatever. Whatever happens, happens. I'm just going to go there and I'm going to fall. The game's not going to And I'm just going to go and, and, and we're going we're gonna to do our best. So that's, that's what I ended up doing. It ended up working out surprisingly. So, you but, so, yeah. So, so going into the tournament, though, like, I definitely think, like, because I'm a teenager, like, most teenagers, like, do care what other people think. But, like, you especially have, like, got me to be to a point where, like, I just have to focus on me and just what I'm with. And, like, my, my friend. And, like, who, who really, like, fucks with me. Exactly. I mean, because this is the thing when you guys, and that's what pisses me off because everybody at this level is good. And you you good enough to beat anybody, as you showed this weekend or whatever. And... To me, it's like if you're always worried about what other people think and what people on Twitter think and what people, what I think, who the hell am I? You know, I'm not there anymore. I'm the ultimate person just sitting back watching y'all play. If you consistently try to cater to what other people think, it's always going to be somebody that, you, that, that you're never going to have any satisfa- satisfaction out of that because there's always going to be somebody else hating on you. Even you look at Skimbo and Drenny, like they're, they're at the pinnacle, to, like they accomplish the most. But there's still people that probably hate on them. There's always going to be somebody that's, you know, not approve of where you are. So if you constantly try to, you know, please other people, you're always going to be disappointed. Because there's always haters and every, everything they do. So that's when I see you. The first thing you said all weekend was Donnie Moore's Twitter post. Yeah, I know. I know. Like, I knew Girl. you were going to say something about that. Because it's like, who cares about, I don't even care about Donnie Moore, let alone who, who the hell follows Donnie Moore to that point. You know what I'm saying? Like, those people, they don't even know what's going on in Madden. You know, yeah. and, and the best way to earn respect from these people is pretty much just go ahead and perform. Just win. Yeah, and go there and win. You're never going to get, like I said, when you make X amount of live events with seven out of eight, whatever it may be, that like it's, it's never going to be enough for anybody, you know, regardless, especially if you yeah. waste your time trying to, you know, appease to these to the people that aren't playing the game, the people that aren't aren't important, essentially. And I think that's really a. A big deal, and I think you will become a better man player when you don't care about what all these other people think about. No, that's definitely true. Just go there and do what you got to do, handle business. Yeah, but I, I definitely, I don't know about the playing only four games in a month <laughs> or whatever. I don't know if that's the move. Yeah, it definitely was not, but it ended up working out. Yeah, but you, could, you definitely had the PG trips tight end. Oh, uh, I know. It was, it was real bad. Yeah. So, but talk about getting blown out in the finals. Because I've been there. Journey blew me out in the final six or whatever of Ultimate League last year. Mm-hmm. And it's a feeling like, because you know you pretty much lost the game. Like Yeah, the and you got to sit there with the fake yes. crowd still cheering and shit. No, I didn't have to deal with the fake crowd. That would have oh. made me sick. <laughs> oh, I was sick. And uh, uh, you didn't kick, I, Journey told me that you, you didn't kick a field goal to get points. That was very respectable. You know I'm saying? I thought that was. Yeah, I was. Kick three, like I don't know. At that point, like I played bad. Drini was probably the best player I played all year. Like he really knew what he was doing. He was better than me. He put in a lot more time. He knew what to do, and he was running like I was so prepared for bunch. That was I played for like four bunches and one trips. So he comes out in his offense like I haven't really seen all year except when I was labbing him earlier, and I I just was I was kind of shook. And then on offense, I've never been good, so I just needed to somehow get points on the first drive. And then forced him to pass. The game just got out of hand quickly. And I mean, it definitely sucked when, like, the game's basically over and you're just like, for that. Because, like, you were one game away and then you get blown out on TV. Like, it definitely sucks. And, I and I've definitely you, been hearing about that too. So. Yeah, but I can't nobody really tell you about that because at the end of the day, you made money. And that, that's what it's about, really. You know, mm-hmm. I, really I made a mistake that. right here, too, on the play on stream. What happened? I, I'm just talking. I'm, at the so. When? I, I ended up flipping my run because I, I was, I don't know, I was just not really paying or whatever. And 
I instead of running the ball and giving because I have two timeouts, giving myself a nine ball play on third down. I call it so late that I don't have enough time to get a playoff on uh, third, so I have to kick on third. And oh, have to take three. yeah, you let the clock run all the way down. Yeah, I didn't notice that. I yeah, I I realized it as soon as I did it that I made a mistake. Like what? I, I'm, I'm, why would you even wait right now? Like what's the? I I, I really don't know. Jesus, I, I really, so I, I, what I'm getting <laughs> from this is that you put in no time in this game. That that's. I mean, so so like what what's what's the life of Spoto? Like where where do you go from? Like what do you want to do? Like like with Madden and everything? Like you're still like buku young. Like you are. I am twice as old as you. So like wow, like, that seems like. Like, do you want to be people in Madden? Do you want to be the best? Like, what's your mindset as far as Madden's concerned? I mean, I obviously I'm going to keep on playing because I feel like without even putting in a lot of time, I have been able to, like, make a decent amount of money. And then, but next year I'm going to college and I'm dorming, so it's going to be, like, difficult to put in as much time as I used to put in back in Madden 7. Madden. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to keep on playing and keep on trying to make it live then. Yeah. You might as well, I mean, but like I said, this is where I'm different from you guys. You know, all you young guys, y'all still have your whole schooling and life, and y'all, like, pretty much becoming adults. Where me, it's like, man, I'm either going to cut trees or I'm playing Madden. <laughs> so for me, it's an easy decision. I'm going to put the most I can into Madden. And uh, for you guys, it's definitely a, definitely a toss-up. You know, do you want to keep playing Madden? You have an avenue to keep playing Madden. You have a lot, as much as Journey won the event, and Skimbo, Skimbo, you, I mean, as far as talk, who's the talk of the tournament was you and Skimbo's game. Yeah, you the know, second, so. I, I definitely felt like the second game of, uh, second game was the game of the year almost for the MCS. Yeah. Like, not even, like, gameplay-wise, but just, like, entertainment value. I definitely oh, felt yeah. like by both of us, like, getting up and saying stuff to each other. And, like, nothing was really out of pocket. No, no. I didn't feel like. I mean, like I said, uh, the bitch was a little crazy. Yeah, I know. Yeah, but you know, that the skimbo's not that person. But you might next, you might be at some little tournament, you know, nah, in some that, back alley and say that, and then somebody not. Yeah, win, you know what I'm saying. So that's the only thing I would like, because that's the only thing people can't get mad if if you just cap at him, man. You can't really say anything, and it is salty. I know Skimbo was super salty, and he was upset that I was even going to talk about this, and uh, it had to get talked about, man. It, it, it like you said, it was the biggest game of the tournament. Uh, definitely was the biggest, most talked about game. So it definitely had to get talked about, and uh, to get. It was like the first game that I was, that I saw like a lot of like people that don't even really mess with competitive Madden that much, like content creators, like talking about the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but ultimately, man, that's not. And one thing, like you said, I, I care about the entertainment as much as it's not really our job, you know. And that's something I remember going into the Ultimate League, man. Last year, I was like, man, I don't want to run Bunch because I want to do what's more entertaining. You know, and I felt a burden to where I need to be different just to make this more watchable. And I felt mm-hmm. it hurt me as a player. And if, if, if a player start, like you said, I, I have to go in to make this more entertaining, you know, maybe that's going to start hurting players and so on and so forth. It's not our job to make this that entertaining. It, it definitely helps. But I they, think they not just making job. it entertaining, but like almost building your own brand, like be entertaining so if you like start to scream or something you can get viewers just off people know how you're gonna be and people find that entertaining then they'll be able to they'll just get more viewers it leads to like more opportunity in the future so in other words we're gonna have spoto streams i don't know i don't know if i keep playing madden this year i'm not taking a break taking we'll a see break I, from madden. I will tell you madden is a lot better when it's not when you're not stressed about it that, that's very true. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm not going to be going to Dallas because I graduated uh, high school. So without like that tournament, there's really nothing else that I know of that's gonna be going on. To, like Warren, playing. Yeah, well, short, talk about your pop. Like, how much is he into this? How much does he watch this stuff? I mean, he's really supportive. Actually, like he was giving me some tips before, like going to the skimble game. I was like, Dad, I played five thousand. I I don't need any help. Yeah. Uh, but he really but like that, that is another thing with Madden too. Like it's not like any like like a Counter Strike or Fortnite or anything like that. It's football. So like mm-hmm. every Sunday, me and my dad we sit down and watch a dime. So like that is one avenue that like this sport has to explore. It's like the Madden, not Madden, the uh, the football like fan. No, yeah, for sure. So everybody has their little two cents they can put in. Yeah, they, you know. You I mean, know I, I hear it a lot. I hear it a lot. Trust. Me. 
Yeah, for sure. It was always to me. It was like I, I, I didn't um, like I said. It was to me. I'm older than you, so you kind of have to have your parents involved to an extent, you know. Because yeah, so young. Cause me, I was like, I don't want my dad. You know, don't ask me about Madden. I hate that. Like my mom, it, to this day, like who's playing? Is Skimbo playing? Is it such and such playing? Like I'm like, no, I don't really want to talk Madden with you. But for you, it's like it, it's kind of become a support system. Yeah, definitely. I mean, they're definitely really supportive. Like they let me go. I mean, I miss school time. I miss everything for it. I've missed like to play in tournaments before. I've had to like miss family events, and they they definitely know that like now in the beginning I didn't even believe it. Like when I made that first challenge and I I came out of my room, I was like, Mom, I just made ten thousand dollars minimum. They were so confused, and the emails start coming in. They're like, Wow, this is for real. Yeah. Yeah, I remember I told my dad the first time like two three years ago. Yeah, I made five thousand bucks. I'm going to Florida. He was like, Oh, all right. Well, are you coming to work on Monday? <laughs> Like what? Like it was definitely, definitely different. So uh, yeah, they were, they had no idea. They didn't know anything about this. Mm-hmm. And then that, you know, my dad's gone to every single one now because I, uh, I'm only 17, so he's has to. Yeah, so that's that's cool. Definitely. Who helped you play the most? You said D. Croft and Henry. Those are the only people you. Played? Uh, D. Croft, J. Well, those three helped. Okay, so but you didn't incorporate no no three hitches on the field, high ball one. I I know. I just I know they just play different style. To be honest. Yeah, they definitely play a lot different. And this was, I want to say this was the big play in the game. Yeah, yeah. you get a third and two, you call the right play with this hitch and then a curl, and you high And then, yeah. Over I, I, mm-hmm. Now, this, I this is one play that noticed me. Okay, now, me, let me pause this game. Me, it's like, and this comes in man all the time. Like, I just saw my play was wide open, right? And you got to know that Skimbo just saw that your play was wide open. Right. That is very true, yeah. So, do you think, okay, I'm going to run the same play? Because I do this a lot, too. I'm going to run the same play, but don't you – is this where the chess game comes in? He's got to adjust to that, right? You definitely think you would have to adjust to it, but, I mean, like, the way that we play, we like to just do the same thing over and over again, and that's what I was kind of picking up on. And having the um, – so, if he doesn't blitz the outside corner, he's going to have to use her, the curl route. So, then I'll either have – corner from the tight end or the wheel from the running back if it's a hard fight or a cloud flat. So I knew what my progressions were. And as soon as I saw the same defense, that's what I was going to. Yeah, but then obviously you didn't highball it. That was a good play. and that, that was Yeah, I wasn't going to highball it, right? Especially after overthrowing the first time. I just possession catch and try to get down. Yeah, for sure. But that's definitely something that it, even when I play weekend league, you play anybody, when you see my play was so open, he's got to run a different defense. You know, and that's pretty much sometimes you got to call a different play, but you definitely went with the same play and it worked out. Because ultimately, like you said, that play has a lot of reads and it worked out, man. But, jeez. But, so, like I said, so we're not going to see any photo streams. Um, Maybe next year. We'll see. We'll see. Now's the time to, to capitalize. No, that's definitely true. The game's been out for a while, though, and I really don't enjoy it too much. Yeah. So. Oh, so you like the Fortnite trip? I mean, I just had fun playing that game. This is more like business. Yeah, for sure. But it's like, but it just comes down to what you want to do, man. But, no, I, I know. But I, I mean, I, I, see just, what, I see what like, you're doing, Dreamy's doing, Clef's doing. Like, you guys are real, really building something. Yeah, but it, it's definitely rough and it's definitely work. And it turns into a job, a different type of job than just trying to be good at the tournaments, really. But like I said, I mean, I, I really just bust your balls because you can be better than you are. You know, and all this man mm-hmm. stuff really, all this man stuff really turns into life stuff. You know what I mean? It's like, even say you're gonna go to college, right? And, and yeah. so on and so forth. And if you try to like impress every person, and, and you're worried about what you know this professor thinks or this little you know, so and so thinks, then it's gonna you're never gonna be satisfied. You're never gonna feel like you accomplished anything. You know, mm-hmm. you just gotta try to be a better person and, and really become you know the be- best spoto that you can be you know, from here on out, really. And that's why I say Madden really, Madden really compares the real life in a lot of different ways. And also, as far as the shit talking, like, if you're going to talk shit, you got to laugh and smile every single time. And if you're a skimbo and you just smile and laugh at the kids, you got to do that every single time. Keep your demeanor and keep your posure, whether it be, you know, from one week to the next week, one day to the next day, or one hour to the next hour. Always keep the same head and not just, but just yeah. bless your balls because you can be better for the most part. Man. No, I know. If I put in more time, I feel like I could be way better. I got to just focus on me. Okay. So you, you want to stay on the P4 next year or you want to come over to the jungle? 
I qualified for clubs, Jungle. No, nah, qualifying for clubs is the easiest thing in the world, though. Come on now. No, nah, th- that's very true. Yeah. Um, I don't know yet. I'll probably end up bringing both up to college. Let's see. There you go. What college are you going to? Uh, SUNY Albany. Albany York. In Albany? Like, in the city? Albany? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so how's that going to be? Are you excited? I guess. Do you got a little girlfriend, or you you single spoto? Single photo. Oh my gosh. Smart man, smart man. So going to college. Definitely smart. Okay. Too much money to be thrown away. Oh, see. Too much money gets thrown away being in relationships. Yep. Okay, okay. Second level stuff. Jeez, that was big. All right, well, I said, man. Yeah, I, yeah, this was the play I was talking about where I just knew he was not his self. When he just throws directly at Sean Taylor. Oh, yeah, that was definitely rough. I didn't even. I can't lie. I kind of turned the game off. Well, I was in the mountains and I lost my service. I, I didn't see this play, I don't think. Well, maybe I did, and maybe this is when I kind of turned the game off. Yeah, I don't know. What the hell? Yeah, that was rough. I think he kind of wanted him to stay on the sideline, but even then. Yeah, I was yeah. just, like, trying to stand in between the tight end and Julio. Just whatever one he threw to be able to get there, make a play on the ball. Well, and at that point of the game, it's pretty much I'm just going to run the ball and hopefully get no field goal. Really? Run the ball, throw some bullshit. Yeah, that's, that's really just goal. Just take as much time as possible. Get a field goal. Make a possession game. You've been struggling on offense. Don't give him anything. Yeah, for sure. But it was definitely bad. Won the game because of defense. But uh, mm-hmm. like I said, man, I, I, I really just bust your balls because you can be better. You know, and I am the ultimate sit, sit at home and tell you guys what you do wrong. And you don't do too much wrong on the Madden field. But you can definitely be better at the, uh, you know, the learning about yourself, learning about life. And learn about you know being people in Madden and not worry about Donnie anymore because I don't worry about Donnie anymore. <laughs> I never because we all look at the shit, we all look at the polls, we all look at what everybody says. But you know, if you use it for fuel, that's one thing. But to try to please all these people, uh, you know, you'll never get it done. There's still tons of people that I'll always hate you. Mm-hmm. you know? well, all right, but I appreciate all you. Right, by. You had a great year. How much money did you win this year? Uh, like forty thousand. Forty thousand dollars. Okay. Did you win money last year? Yeah, fifteen. Fifteen. So you at fifty-five 57. grand. Yeah, well, fifty-seven. 57. To say, that's not bad, especially for seventeen. Nah, that's I, not bad. I'll tell you what, I wish I won my money when I was seventeen. And people ask me what I do with my man money. I say I live like it, it costs money to live when you're my age, you know. So I wish I had it your age, you know. So you'll definitely have the rest of your life ahead of you. But I appreciate you coming on, man. I'll definitely yeah, no put, problem, I will, put, I will put the links in all the description. Make sure people follow you and everything, man. Good run. And congratulations on everything. All right. Thank you, BW. Yep. That was the young Spoto God. Appreciate him joining the podcast, man. That was definitely different, man. Uh, but able to talk to the champ, able to talk to Spoto. Uh, I don't know when I will be able to talk to Skimbo. You know, we'll see. I think he probably went on an island or something, but... Once he gets over, once Skimbo get over losses, he's gonna be able to look back and, and laugh about this and everything, and it's definitely gonna be a good uh, a good time, you know. But uh, this was near podcast. This was episode twenty eight. This has been twenty eight straight weeks of podcast. It's been very easy with these tournaments, games to talk about, players to talk about. Uh, it's definitely um. It's definitely been easy and been fun to watch. Madden 19 ended on a great note. I think that tournament was great. I'm glad all you guys watched. I don't know what they did to get the stream numbers up that high. I hope they viewed by it as something or embedded the stream. It was around 100K. I don't know if we hit the triple digits in thousands, but it was probably the best Madden tournament so far as far as viewership, and it was real successful. It definitely was a... Definitely was um, a successful tournament to such a long year. And a rough year for Madden, and I'm glad it ended on such a good note. We have a lot of weeks to, to get going here in the offseason. The Needed Podcast is going to keep on pushing through the offseason. So if you have any ideas of what we can talk about, I know I have, I myself have tons of ideas, and the show will not stop in the offseason. It will not cease. We will have roundtable discussions about format, about MCS, about what we want in the game. Whoever you guys want me to get on the podcast, as far as big names, as far as people that are important in Madden, definitely put that on the comment list, man. If you guys have any questions regarding any of these shows or any topics, please put that in the comments, man. I appreciate all the support you guys come through. 
but I will definitely try to come through with a, uh, a round table of the biggest mad names so we can talk about not only the format, but what we want in Man 20. Next week, I'm probably going to talk about a little bit. People started this on Twitter, but we're going to talk about the Madden Awards for Madden 19. Who's the best player, the best offensive player, best defensive player, the best game? How about the best play from the Madden 19 MCS? Uh, those are going to be pretty much my topics next week. That's what we're talking about. Unless something crazy happens, unless something crazy happens, I got to talk about. It's pretty much going to be about the um, the awards for the Madden 19 season. That's what I want to get into. That's what I want to uh, continue to talk about. But I'm definitely going to form some type of roundtable to talk about the big discussions. Probably get four or five people on there. It's going to be a big deal. But this was Needed Podcast Episode 28. If you're on SoundCloud, make sure you check it out on YouTube to see the plays we broke down. If you're on YouTube, please hit that like button. Comment on what you want to hear on the off-season of Madden. Definitely going to be a big deal. I appreciate all you guys coming through. This was 28, 28 weeks, episode 29 next week.